So this is a, another Visto live chat. Um, if you are live, I really appreciate you being here and we'll get to some cool questions and answers at the end of it. If you're not watching live, then make sure to sign up at visto.ai. We're going live in our private Facebook group three times a week, talking about stuff about IELTS, finding a job in Canada and different PNP programs. Today, going to be a short 15 minute chat about IELTS. I'm going to go into an overview. I'm going to talk about my experience uh, as a Canadian immigration lawyer, having written the IELTS exam last year and give you some my tips, my advice, and then we'll get to some Q and A. Just to dispel any myths. I did write the IELTS last year. Here's the results. I guess you can't really see them there, but I do have official IELTS results. Triple uh, nine, eight point five. I got an eight point five in writing. Apparently, because I don't handwrite much anymore, my handwriting isn't so good. So I only got an eight point five on writing. I was a little frustrated about that. But anyways, I'm gonna go into the IELTS exam and try and give you guys my advice from from having written it and. Uh, hopefully make studying for you as, as easy as possible because of how important it is. Really appreciate it, Geshu, Krishna, Gurjeev. Thanks for signing in live. Really appreciate it. Let's get to the tips. And again, I will get to all your questions at the very end. So I might get into a little bit of a flow here for the next 10 minutes, um, but I will go back up through the chat, catch up if, if you did post any questions. So really, really quick intro. If you don't know what the IELTS exam is, it's an English language exam. Because there's an English language exam required for express entry, IELTS is super popular because it's more world renowned. The, the only other option that Immigration Canada will accept is the CELPIP, which is a, a computer based language exam. I haven't taken it, um, but it's harder to find. So if, if you're not in Canada, if you're not in North America, it really depends on what country you're from. They only provide it in certain countries. And because IELTS has been around for much longer, there's a ton of free resources online. So for that reason, IELTS tends to be a little bit more popular because you, generally you can find it easy and you can find a lot of resources easily. So I took it a year and a half ago and uh, mostly just so I could understand what it is, right? Because so many of my clients and, and now Visto users have to go through the process. So I'm glad that I did. And really quickly going to go over the format. And I'm actually going to highlight the format more more than just because I think it's important to know the format, right? In any test you take, it's super important to know the format and the breakdown. I would say even more so for the IELTS, what really surprised me after I started practicing and, and actually taking the exam was that um, almost as important as it is as practicing your English is just practicing doing the exam and knowing the format. Because if you're comfortable within the confines of the exam, the rest is pretty straightforward, right? The format doesn't really change at all. The only things that change are obviously the content of the questions and maybe based on the person who gives you your speaking questions will vary a little bit. But even still, the format between each section is pretty much identical test to test. So if you want to give yourself the best chance at scoring well, you should really know the format and be comfortable within the format and the time constraints as well. So really quickly, the IELTS is broken up into four sections, listening, reading, writing, speaking. In most cases, what you're going to want is a triple seven, eight. And what that means is for these last three here, reading, writing, and speaking, you want a seven. And in listening, you want an eight. The reason for that is if you get to the triple seven, eight, you get what's called a CLB nine. And that's a big, big boost in express entry points. So if you don't have that, that's that's what you should be working towards. Now, I'm not going to go into de super detail in the format. You can find this online, or like I said, if you don't have our free IELTS guide already, just ping me after this live chat or uh, make sure to sign up at visto.ai and you'll get access to the free IELTS guide. It's straightforward in the sense that, again, like I said, it doesn't change much, but you should get to know the details very well so you know what you're working with. So for example, I'll, I'll quickly run through it. Listening is 30 minutes, there's 40 questions, and there's basically a tape playing, and you're going through questions and, and answering them, whether it's fill in the blank, multiple choice, stuff like that. Reading is 60 minutes. So again, you're gonna have a variety of passages, and we'll go into more detail as I go through my tips, but you're gonna have a variety of passages of different lengths and different styles, and you're gonna have questions based on those that you're gonna to have to answer. Writing is an hour, 60 minutes, 
and it's two questions. One is a shorter kind of letter that they call it, uh, so 150 words uh, minimum, and then you have a longer essay, which is 250 words minimum, uh, where they'll give you basically a prompt or a type of question, and you have to write out your answer to that. Speaking is between 11 to 14 minutes, so again, it kind of depends, but you're sitting with an interviewer, and they're asking you different types of questions and, and, and sort of creating a conversation with you. So again, highly recommend you really getting to, you can go on the IELTS website, right? Just Google IELTS, you'll find the IELTS website. Oh, I have the link right here, coincidentally. So I, I have it here for more details on each section, see the following link, because you can read in great detail exactly what each, uh, each section of the exam, exactly how it's broken down. And I found it really important because even as, a, like I'm a native English speaker, I've been through law school in English, you know, everything I've ever done has always, always been in English, so I'm very comfortable with the English language. But even still, the first time I took a practice exam, you still feel a little bit lost and you're kind of playing catch up, especially because each section is timed. So the more, and that's one of my key takeaways, is the more comfortable you are within the confines and the structure of the exam, the more confident you're going to be and, and the better you'll do. So make sure to take a, take a look at that link. So we're going to go through general study tips. And uh, I might go through some specific section study tips. What I'm probably going to do today is go through my general study, study tips. And then each week, I'm going to pick one section and we're going to do a deep dive. So for example, maybe next week I'll do listening, the week after I'll do reading, the week after writing, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Because it is important to go deep on, on each one. So general study tips will go one at a time here. So number one, if you can set aside a few hours a day to study, you should be able to do quite well within three to four weeks of preparation. So again, this is totally, you know, a lot of people wonder how far out should I book the exam, right? This is why I have this, this line in here. And it totally depends, right? Some of you may be unemployed. Some of you may be studying uh, it's at school. Some of you may have a full-time job. Some of you may have a full-time job with a family and children. Some of you may have a full-time job with no family and children. So it kind of depends on a few things. Number one, how much free time you have to spend. Number two, um, kind of where where your starting point is, right? Some of you naturally are at a better starting point than some other ones of you, right? So you, you kind of have to gauge how much time can I dedicate a week and how far along is my English language already and how confident am I in it uh, to determine how much time. I would say on average, if you give yourself three to four weeks and put in the right amount of time, you should be okay. If you have more specific situation, feel free to shoot a question in the in the Facebook chat and I'll get to it at the end and I can kind of give you my suggestion for how long I would I would prepare for. Um, okay, so focus on the sections you need the most improvement in, but don't forget to continue practicing them all too. Okay, so this is something that I kind of picked up on after a few weeks of practicing, um, which was after you do a few practice exams, and I'll talk a little bit about how I recommend starting to do them, but after you do a few, you're going to get a really good idea of which ones you're better at, right? Because you're going to do practice exams, practice sections, and then you're going to take up the score and you're going to see, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, consistently scoring well on listening, but I'm consistently scoring poorly on writing. So as you start the study process, as a week or two goes by, you still want to, you know, be honing your skills in all of the sections. But start spending more and more of your time on the sections that you're weak at because it becomes very clear pretty quickly. And usually what I've seen is that a lot of people struggle more with the writing section just because a lot of us haven't been asked to handwrite answers for things in a while, right? And if you're pretty good with English, then you're generally, you know, good enough at listening and, and, and reading and speaking. Uh, speaking can be tough too. Again, it depends on where you're coming from. But generally speaking... Speaking and writing tend to be the ones that people are, are weaker at, but point out which ones or figure out which ones you're weakest at and focus a little bit more on those. Uh, this is one of the keys, I think, when you're starting out. To start slowly, to make sure you're doing the exercises properly. Once you've made improvements, start using a timer. So when you, when you start looking into the format, you're going to notice that each section is timed, right? So it depends on how good you are at English and how good you are at English under time pressures. The thing that you want to keep in mind, and this is what I learned the hard way, is the first thing I did 
because I'm pretty confident in my English, is I took out a timer, I took out a practice exam, and I just went. And I just started the exam. And what I learned really quickly is that that's not the best way to practice at the beginning. The best way to practice at the beginning is to go through each section, understand the confines and the, and the, and the form of each section, and start doing practice questions with each, within each section without a timer. And the reason I say that is because the first thing you want to do is learn the ins and outs of the questions and the styling of the questions so that you get good at getting the right answer, right? Because it doesn't matter how quick you are at answering if you're answering everything wrong, right? So sure, you, you might be able to be, to be great at finishing all the sections within the, the allotted time. But if every question is wrong, then it doesn't even matter, right? So the first thing you really want to focus on after you understand the format of the exam is do a whole bunch of questions within each section without a timer so that you get really good at answering them correctly. The next step from there is to figure out the timing, right? So start with getting really good at answering the questions correctly. And then only in the last week or two do you have to worry about timing. The other thing is, the more you understand the types of questions and the better you get at them and the more confident, the quicker you'll be able to go through them, right? So if you time yourself the first time, your timing is going to be bad, you're going to be slow, and then you're just going to start, you're going to lose confidence, and it's going to kind of set you back a little bit. Hold off on the timer at the beginning, get really good at answering the questions well, then start introducing the timer and, and putting those time pressures on yourself. That's what I would recommend. Another piece of advice is include more English in your everyday life. And, and this one, especially for those of you who are busy, this is another kind of convenient way to add more uh, study time into your day. So again, you know what the sections are, right? Reading, listening, speaking, and writing. The more of all of those four things you can infuse into your day-to-day -day life, the more practice you're gonna get. So for example, uh, start listening to more podcasts. If you're, if you're on a commute, you should be listening to a podcast or even read it. You know, maybe you're sitting on a bus, read a book uh, to and from work. Um, you know, write some family members some letters. I don't know, write letters to maybe customers or thank you letters to clients if, if it's for business purposes. Uh, start p speaking to more people. Talk to the coffee person. Talk to the support desk. Um, definitely make sure, ideally, that they're good English speakers who you're talking to. Um, you know, call support lines, whatever it is, just start doing those four things more in whatever way you can, because what IELTS is trying to grade you on is kind of your everyday English speaking. And you'll see once you start doing the practice exams, it, it's very kind of like everyday type stuff they ask. So the more that you can include that in your life, the better. The next tip I have, this is a big one, get a good sleep the night before the IELTS and make sure you are there on time. I don't have to go into much detail on make sure you're there on time because if you're late, that's self-explanatory. You don't want to be late. All it's going to do is add pressure and stuff like that to anxiety. You want to get there nice and early. The reason why I say to get a good night's sleep is because it's a long day, right? So you could practice in the comfort of your own home and it can be really nice and anything like that. But once you actually get there, it's a long day, right? It's about, it's about two and a half hours um, to do the listening, reading, and writing part. And then where I did it, I did it in Toronto. So what happens is, by the time you get there early, sign in, do all three sections, and then they call you for a break, it's about a three, three and a half hour process, right? That's a long time to be sitting and, and thinking. So your brain's getting kind of tired. And then they call everyone back one at a time to do speaking. So I got lucky because it was about 45 minutes later. So I had a little bit of time to recoup and then speaking was 45 minutes later and then I went home. So I was home probably about, uh, what was it, probably about 1 p.m. in the afternoon after getting there at like 7 in the morning. But if you get unlucky, you might have to wait till 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, probably not that late, but 3, 4, 5 p.m. In that case, it's like an 8 or, eight or 9 hour day, right? So you want to be well rested so your brain is fully focused, fully functioning, uh, and all that good stuff. So here are some good free resources. 
Um, again, if you don't have this PDF, please ping me afterwards and I can send it directly to you. But basically what I did is I took links from different websites that had good free practice questions as well as some good YouTube channels that had some really good uh, really good videos. There's so many free resources online. That's why when I put together this five page guide, I kept it kind of more general and more as a guide to help you get started. There's so many more resources out there that I, that I think are pretty good to help for actually practicing those questions. Um, so to kind of summarize before we go to the Q&A here, I'll say rest up and give yourself enough time. Start slow. So start by learning the sections themselves. What is the format of each of the four sections? Then start doing practice questions for each of them until you get really confident and good that you've kind of picked up on the habits or, you know, the, the normal, the normalcies of each so that you're confident, then work in the timer. Because if you work in the timer too quickly, you're just going to rush yourself. You're going to lose confidence. You don't do well. Start getting good at each single section on its own and then start working in the timer uh, at that point. So that's kind of it for the, for the intro guide at this point. Like I said, what I'm going to do in subsequent weekends um, on Sundays is I'm going to do a deep dive on each section. So, for example, next weekend, maybe I'll, I'll probably start next weekend with writing because writing seems to be the one that most people need a lot of help with. Um, so probably next week, next Sunday, I'll do writing, then I'll do listening, or, you know, I'll pick one each week. Um, the other thing that, that I'd like to do is actually take up people's um, writing questions live. So if you are practicing writing, you can send me what you've written and we can do an audit uh, together and I can give you some feedback. So that's it for the presentation portion of this video. Like I said, if you're, if you're not watching this live and you're not going to take part in the Q&A that's about to happen, make sure to, to join www.visto.ai, free to join, free platform, helping skilled workers through express entry. And uh, feel free to invite your friends as well. We'll be putting out a lot more content. And otherwise, I will see you in the next video.